This video was brought to you by Brilliant. If you live in the UK, you'll have probably heard about the UK's mortgage crisis. That's because as interest rates have gone up, mortgages have become significantly more expensive, putting some homeowners under immense financial pressure. However, while it's not getting as much attention, both because there are fewer renters and because renters just aren't as politically powerful a constituency as homeowners, the crisis in the UK's private rental market is arguably worse than what's happening to mortgages. Rents are rising far faster than earnings, exacerbating the cost of living crisis and sparking an unprecedented wave of evictions. So in this video, let's take a look at the UK's rental crisis, why rents are going up as fast as they are, and how to solve it. So let's get straight into the UK's rental crisis. Now, rents were already pretty expensive in the UK before the pandemic. Private renters often complained that even if they had good jobs, they were paying too much rent in order to save enough money for a deposit on a house, which left them stuck in rentals and unable to benefit from rising house prices. Across the UK, the average amount of time required to save for a deposit is now nine years. And in London and other desirable cities, that rises to nearer 15 years. Ultimately, this disproportionately affected young people who are far more likely to rent. For context, 65% of Brits own their own homes, while 17% are in what's called public housing. That's housing associations or council housing. That leaves the remaining 18 or so percent in private renting. However, of that 18% in private rented accommodation, 78% are between 25 and 34, compared to about 25% in the wider UK population. As such, a new term, generation rent, has appeared to describe the young people stuck in the private rental market and unable to save enough for a deposit. And that's unsurprising, because even before the recent spike in prices, UK renters were spending an average of 23% of their income on rent. And in London, that figure rises to 38%. And it gets worse than that, because a third of renters spend at least 50% which is considered severely rent burdened, according to a survey of 11,000 people by Spare Room, the flat sharing platform. Unfortunately for renters though, since the pandemic, prices have risen sharply, exacerbating the pre-existing crisis. Now the data varies a bit, but according to analysis by the Financial Times, rents in the UK are currently up 10% year on year. And that follows a steep increase last year too. In fact, UK annual rent increases set a new record for 12 consecutive months leading up to April this year, according to ONS data going back to 2016. That means that newly let properties are now 25% more expensive than they were when the pandemic hit in 2020, according to the estate agents Hamptons. And in London, the problem is particularly acute. Rents are up more than 15% year on year, and according to Property Mark, the leading membership body for property agents, in May 2020, there are now 35 people competing for each property in London, compared to a historic average of about five. Now, this might be palatable if the properties were getting better, but if anything, the reverse seems to be true. Many renters complain of constant mould, damp, and generally a substandard experience. And this isn't even necessarily because landlords are evil, greedy parasites. It's because with 35 people per property, landlords have little incentive to make their properties that much more appealing. And this property spike has also led to a new wave of evictions. Evictions due to rent arrears reached the highest on record going back to 2009 for the first three months of this year, while no fault evictions jumped to the highest level since 2017. So why is all of this happening? Well, as we see it, there are at least three reasons. The first is rising interest rates. Now, interest rates strain the rental market in lots of ways. 
For instance, they discourage would-be first-time buyers, who might choose to rent for a little longer instead of taking out high-interest mortgages. They also make it more expensive for landlords with mortgages, who often pass on their new mortgage costs to their tenants. And this is just one of the ways that interest rate hikes have distributional consequences. In theory, rising interest rates are supposed to take money out of the economy, but in practice, they have a disproportionate impact on poorer and younger people. The second reason we could be seeing this, though, is the pandemic and its aftermath. During the pandemic, the rental market cooled down significantly because no one was moving out. And the stamp duty holiday that the government introduced helped to prop up the housing market during the pandemic, which encouraged lots of landlords to sell their properties. In fact, some 140,000 landlords retired over the pandemic, according to Hamptons, which means less supply and therefore higher prices. But the third and perhaps most important reason is just the lack of houses. In order to maintain supply, the UK needs about a quarter of a million new houses annually. But since the 1970s, we've only averaged 160,000. This leaves UK house building looking lacklustre by international standards. From 1980 to 2004, the UK's housing stock grew by 2.4%, while French housing stock grew by 3.2%, and German housing stock grew by 37 according to data from the European Mortgage Foundation. House building did accelerate over the pandemic, reaching a high of about 240,000 completions by 2020, but this is still far short of the government's 300,000 target, and developers predict a further drop in construction of about 30% this year due to higher borrowing costs and inflation-limited demand. Now, obviously, this creates a mismatch between supply and demand, but the accompanying shortage of social housing also means that the 1 million or so people currently on the social housing waiting list have been pushed into the private rental market, adding to this stress even further. So what is the solution to all of this? Well, in the short term, the government is planning to push through two pieces of legislation to give renters more rights and improve their bargaining power with landlords. But both pieces of legislation have been delayed multiple times. In the meantime, Scotland has introduced rent controls to try and tamp down prices. But on the whole, rent controls don't have a great track record. And while it has kept down prices, it's also sparked a wave of sales from landlords, creating a structural shortage of rental properties. In the long term, then, the only permanent solution is to build more houses. But the Tories haven't been very good at this, both because the conservative base of homeowners and landlords benefit from a housing shortage, but also because many conservative MPs take a not-in-my-backyard attitude to housing, which means that even if they're in favour of more houses in general, they don't like the idea of them being built in their constituency. And even if this was to change, it won't make much of an impact anytime soon. That's because most analyses agree that a 1% increase in housing stock would cut prices by less than 2%. But regardless, it needs to happen if we're ever going to solve this problem when it comes to buying or renting properties. Irrespective of what happens next, though, it's interesting that even as people ostensibly into politics, the TLDR team spends more and more time analysing data and economic information as it becomes more and more critical to our lives. And as a bunch of people who are ordinarily more focused on words than numbers, we've really benefited from the courses on Brilliant.org in order to keep ourselves sharp. That's because Brilliant is the best way to learn maths and computer science in a fun and interactive way. From foundational and advanced maths to AI, data science, neural networks, decision making and more. With new lessons added monthly. Even if, like us, you don't think of yourself as a traditionally STEM kind of person, these courses could prove incredibly useful for your life and career. Courses like Data Analysis and the Fundamentals of Statistics can help anyone ensure that they're properly understanding our increasingly data-driven world. Which is good news when your boss suddenly asks you to analyse a trade war, an economy, or the collapse of a currency. 
you know, just hypothetically. Anyway, you can try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days by clicking the link in the description. Plus, the first 200 of you to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for your support and for watching TLDR.